Yay! It's We're not dead. Minute. It's been a minute. We're not dead. We're not dead. Are you dead, man? I know. I know that you're dealing with a sickness right now. I am dealing with a sickness, and that is the only time you will hear about it the rest of this podcast because I do <laughs> not have time to tell Chris to not talk about me being sick. <laughs> you sound fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't sound messed up at all. I'm not I hear it clicking. That's not me sucking on a halls. All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> You know what we could do? We could make this whole episode just an ASMR thing and just have people just hear you suck on the halls just so they can feel that weird suck pleasure they get people to hear that. Uh, my name is still the same name from the last episode. Here, let me fix that. So while I was gone, while I was like when while I was gone, um mm -hmm. the program that we use completely updated, and I haven't been on it until uh last night and today. Uh, trying to get everything ready for today, and half of our stuff is gone. <laughs> Literally, I, I had to quickly make stuff again. That like like this background that we have that says "movies that don't suck." This is not a background that automatically existed. It is literally one little thing that Chris made, uh, or his wife. I can't remember which one. But, his um, wife. My my wife made it. Yeah, made like years ago. And what I did is I copied and tiled it in photoshop so i could make it this cool background for us and so i had to do that again quickly to make that <laughs> for us like and i had to go look for certain things that because you know there's things that we do a lot like i had to go look for the you know good old spoiler alert symbol and the you know and stuff that we need because we're needy bitches are we talking about spoilers today or just for future it no, no, I was just telling you. I was just showing you what I had to go through. What, what the, what's wrong with you, man? I'm the one sick. You're supposed to be on top of it. You're supposed to be the professor today. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be, but you know, I've had some personal shit going on. That's not like nothing's going the on. Thing but, that uh, makes, the thing that upsets me the most is the fact that they deleted that GIF I have that I made that was our little opener from the beginning when we just start. Because I spent like a couple hours on that thing trying to figure out how to work that thing. Now I'm gonna have to go remake it. Well, you can check so out our Facebook. I have some photos you can add there from uh, Panic Fest. That was it this past week. So no, I, I don't. I don't even know what Panic Fest. Oh, I didn't even think about what the heck is going on now. Wait, what's, what's going on? Oh, nothing. I I have too many pages open in my my things like. You should not have this many pages open. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you. <laughs> your mom shouldn't have this many pages open. <laughs> no, go for it. Why'd you stop? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, this is a new episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to be covering two, count them, two movies out there for your viewing world. Now, before we get into these two movies, I just want you to know, coming up soon will be a bunch of uh, data and data episodes for a wonderful thing that we love to call panic fest chris went to panic fest i couldn't go this year because why chris was at panic fest i was i don't know where was i you oh yeah <laughs> i was at wrestlemania 
40. Now, I love Panic Fest, and Panic Fest is a great place to go. Everybody should go. But I was at WrestleMania at the floor. So um, that's like saying, hey, can do you want to go to the theme park down the road, or do you want a week at Disney World? <laughs> and it's like, and trying to compare the two, they're both great. They're both amazing. Uh, they both. I, I, awesome. I, w- I would say that Panic Fest was. I mean, every year it's my favorite time of year. So, I know, and yeah. I wanted to go, and I, and I mean, next year it's happening for sure because yeah. I'm not going to WrestleMania again. That was expensive as f, and plus, how can I top the greatest WrestleMania of all time? John Cena was there, right? John Cena was only a bit of it, man. Um, <laughs> Like it was, I'll talk about it here. Let's let's actually tell these people what movies we're covering. <laughs> right. The first move, the first movie that we're covering today is a movie that's not even out on a platform until next uh, week or two. Yeah, uh, it is a movie that Chris forced me to watch. Yeah. Um, on uh, this platform, I don't know what it was, but I found it and I watched it. And he told me <laughs> if I didn't watch it, that he would hate me and we'd no longer be friends. So I had to watch this movie, and that movie is called Hundreds of Beavers. Now, this is not the porno Hundreds of Beavers. <laughs> this is an actual movie um, that, exists, yeah. that exists. Do you have any clips for any of the people in this film? No, because it's it's mostly it's uh, no dialogue in this movie. Yeah, it's, it's like a silent. It's a silent movie, but there's, um, there's sound effects and there's music. But it's supposed to be like a golden era of cartoon type movie. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we'll talk about more in depth of that of here in a second. I do, have, I do a clip for it though. Okay, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what a beaver sounds like. By the way, I don't remember hearing that. <laughs> I'm not sure it was in the movie, but I I wanted to get a picture mm-hmm, of beaver. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, right. uh, I don't even know what the heck you just did, bro. <laughs> What did you do? What it... <laughs> All right, uh, what's anyway, the other movie? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. second movie that we did uh, is one that we missed a, about a month or two ago, and mm-hmm. the reason being is I, I only mentioned this once. I can't go out to the theater right now. I am sick. I uh, mm-hmm. during my travels, I got a cold, and I don't want to give it to anybody else, so mm-hmm. I could not go out. And I've only been home for like what forty eight hours. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> yeah. So in the last 48 hours, I watched these movies, put together the podcast as quickly and as good mm-hmm. as I possibly could. And the second mm-hmm. movie is one that we were dying to see before, and we finally got to see it, and that is Bob Marley, One Love. Yeah, who's in the movie? I don't know. You never sent me a list. Uh, <laughs> Kingsley been a deer. <laughs> friends, yes, man. Man. friends, Yes, man. I am his friend, and that is why I am trying to give him a wake-up call. There is no more room for anyone. Not you, not me, not Jimmy, not Sam, no one to be standing on the fence anymore. Our people are literally dying in the streets every day. Black people are dying. That's from uh, One Night in Miami, where uh, Big Kingsley Benadir is playing Malcolm X. But this one plays Bob Marley. Oh, I was like wondering what yeah. we were talking about. Yeah. This is, uh, and also this stars Lozano, Lozano, Lozano Lynch. Oh. This all seems like heaven, just a little bubble or whatever. <laughs> but it's so obvious you're a man who only has time to kill, nothing to live for. Zagado Oprachev is off limits. You get in my way, I will put a bullet in your knee. The one that works. That's from No Time to Die. Lieutenant Diane. Uh, other- no time to die. And the, the, was no that time to die. Yeah. I thought you said Luke. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said Lieutenant Dan. I'm. That's how I'm. <laughs> that's Lieutenant Dan. Um, also, this stars um Anthony Welsh as Don Taylor. I got mixer. I didn't go out especially. I was going anyway. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. It's fine. You missed. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get this out of the way. No, it's okay. You don't have to. Hey, what did you eat? Uh, 
I'm disgusting though. They're sick on the street. A fox will eat it. No, that's disgusting. That's from a show called Pure. It's it came out in the UK. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then finally, uh, th- th- I have another clip for James Norton. If I ask for leave, I will take care of the children. Oh, John. There's one other thing. You should send your fabric to the dressmaker as soon as possible. I can't. No, I don't want to hear another word. I want you to have that dress. My old coat will be fine for the winter. John. It's I- all settled. John, I really can't. I sold the fabric to Sally. You did. I don't want you to be unhappy. That's from Little Women. Holy cow. I remember yeah, Little so. Women. That's one of your favorite movies. Right? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> but, uh, that well, was, you, didn't um, like, you, you, didn't, you didn't like Big Women, but you like Little Women. Oh, Greta Winker, we did directed that one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just uh, kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding, kidding, but uh, we're fucking here, man. Really. And it's been a minute. Yeah, you do. You can make it here. Probably. Could you make it here without like you GPS, you think? What's what? You can make it here without GPS, right? Just like uh, for, straight from memory to my place. Can I drive from one place to another without GPS? Yeah, to, to me, like without using it. Oh, to your house right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. If I use Sean, you mentioned. <laughs> If I if I use Shawnee Mission Parkway, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> from Shawnee Mission Parkway because I know to take the right next to the liquor store, go down, <laughs> and then you go down two over next to the house yeah. with the, the picket fence, and yeah. there's like two, and then you go that way, and then your house yeah. is down on the left. See, I ah, <laughs> see, <laughs> man, yeah. So, um. How was Panic Fest? It was it was incredible, dude. Uh, I was I'm movied out, but uh, I, I I I was there uh, most nights. I was not there uh, Monday or Tuesday, but I was there Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday, the final closing night to see a uh, Boy Kills World in Infested. Um, and I'll tell you, man, I'm I'm, I'm beat. <laughs> like it's a uh, it's kind of exhausting, but I had a great time. I had a great time, dude. You're exhausted. I had to walk yeah, yeah. everywhere. I had like shin splits for like six <laughs> months on my legs, bro. Like I, I was at a place with over seventy-one thousand people mm. on a daily basis, <laughs> yeah. over forty-eight percent higher than the WrestleMania before. Viewership was up forty-one percent from the year before, and it was the highest grossing, highest back. I mean. Again, look at this. Just look at this. This is just from my view from sitting down. Like, look at that. That I, I, how, I often, how, often were you st- how often were you seated, though? I mean, like, like it was, you know, like. Back and forth. You back know, and low. forth. You go back and forth. Because okay. it's like, okay. it'll be like one second. All of a sudden, you'll be like, bam. You're sitting down. The next second, here comes the next big guy. But then we got to meet. You know, like we kept running around meeting people. There's the biggest moment of the of the weekend. That's Cody Rhodes finishing the story after two years. <laughs> but then, like, we got to hang out with Kurt Angle. Yeah, yeah, look at that. <laughs> like he was cool didn't as hell. You, didn't you meet a guy in the plane that was on the plane to Philadelphia? Like, yeah, you know, uh, I I didn't, I didn't load that picture up. Yeah, but Bobby Lashley was like literally, he was right behind us. And I'll tell the story, and then we'll get into everything. Um. Yeah. Uh, literally, uh, I was sitting on the plane and you know how you have, uh, my seat, my foot and Topher was right next to me and he got that little mm-hmm. space in between. Yeah. And I looked behind and I looked behind and me and Bobby Lashley's eyes meet at the same time. And I, and I was like, <laughs> you know, and, but mine went like, you know, like I knew who the fuck he was and he was like, uh, like I saw it in his eyes. And so we're like the rest of the plane, right. He kept his head down. Against yeah, his yeah. back of the seat, yeah. and I, I didn't bother him. The whole plane ride did not bother yeah, me. Yeah. We got off the plane. It's one thirty in the morning in Philadelphia by the time we get there, and literally I just go up to him and I'm like, "Hey, man, 
I obviously know who you are. Can can I just get a quick pick over here before I re- if anybody else notices you? I don't want to bother you again. And he's like, man, that is nice of you to ask to even mm-hmm. do that. Yeah, I'll be more than happy to. And then my friends came off right at the same time. And I was like, they, well, they're obviously going to want a picture. And like he was then, then after that, then after that, he was like hiding and trying to hide himself, which yeah. it's hard to hide yourself when you're that big of a massive man. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he is a big, big dude. And and he just like looks around and realizes we're the only four guys that know who the hell he is. <laughs> and so then he kind of like kind of comes over a little bit more towards us. And then we start just having a great conversation with him because oh, nice. it, he gets it. OK, you're not the asshole stalker guys. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're just your wrestling fans. And and so we had some great conversation with him. Really nice guy. Really sweet. He did great the weekend. He uh, won a match on against the the final resolution on uh, on Sunday. But Chris, that doesn't matter. Chris, you got to tell people where they can find us. Well, you can find us online movies don't suck that net. We're on Facebook at facebook.com. Should I assume don't suck podcast or Twitter? And NT- I'm sorry, X NTS podcast. You guys go there. There's a bunch of pictures I posted and tweeting uh, life between the festival. Uh, also, you can find us on Instagram at uh, NTS Podcast. We're on uh, Patreon, Patreon Constance. You know, suck. Uh, give us a uh, few bucks if you like what we do. Um, also, go to Moffat Comments and Shoes Don't Suck. It's something to do. You'll find our shirt uh, with our logo on it, a bunch of stuff Neil's made. And where you find podcasts, you can find Movies Don't Suck and some that do. Neil, who's our, who, who are we talking about today? Chris, I'm so glad you asked this. Chris. Mm-hmm. There's this kind of music that came out in the 70s, and I don't know if you liked it or not, but I was it's kind of a big fan. I was a big fan of it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. It's called punk rock. Uh-huh. And this place I went to was the most punk rock place you could ever go to in the city of Philadelphia. That's right. The one, the only place known as Crash Bang. Boom on Fourth and South in Philly. Now, Crash Bang Boom is a punk rock heaven of everything from T-shirts to stuff. That's Steph and um. Oh gosh, what's his name? I forgot his name. Give me a second. Uh, I, I got all the info right here. That is Steph and Rob, and we we hung out with them. Uh, every place we went for some reason because of our green hair and stuff like that. People thought that we were in a rock band, and those two <laughs> were just so nice. Uh, they got everything from T-shirts, old band shirts, like everything from, um, you know, like Dead Kennedy shirts, stuff like that. They are Philadelphia's premier. Shirt. Yeah, dude. They are seriously uh, Philadelphia's premier punk rock uh, and roll shop, just a few paces off the world famous South Street. Alternative apparel for punks, goth, metalheads, and rockers. Crash Bang Boom offers tons of cool stuff that you are not going to find at any fucking mall. What you see <laughs> here on their site is just a sample of what they have. You can call them up and they, they'll send you stuff. They are cool as hell. Uh, band tees, leather jackets, girls' clothing, guys' clothing, footwear, handbags, belts, accessories, manic panic, hair dye, makeup, jewelry, all the above. They have even have secondhand uh, consignment section as well. They are just, it's uh, Stephanie Joels and Rob Winfielder. And I mean, uh, the, uh, the Dead Milkman have performed there, I believe. Nice. I think I got that. I think I have the picture right there. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, a lot of famous go in there. A lot of famous people have gone in there, including me. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can see why everybody thought we we were a punk. We were a band, dude. Yeah. I yeah. mean, look at the look at the four of us together. <laughs> that does not look like. <clears throat> but. Guys, it's called Crash Bang Boom. Their website is crashbangboomonline.com. Or you can go to their Facebook, which is Crash Bang Boom Philly. Man. <laughs> uh, can, can I get uh, – I, I didn't get a beverage. Can you give me 15 seconds to get a beverage real quick? No. Nobody Just wants you to get a second. beverage. I'm going to get one. Uh-huh. I'll explain – I'll explain to Mimi LaRue why you are gone. Uh, Mimi, uh, what uh, Panic Fest is, it's a horror movie local festival for local artists. Um, I think, Mimi, if, if I'm not 
if I'm correct, is that your mom? Where? Mimi on the roof? Yeah, uh, Mimi, really, did she say something? Yep, here it goes. Boom, what is Panic Fest? <laughs> oh, Panic Fest. Oh, Mom, I'll tell you what Panic Fest is. Panic Fest is a film festival. They do sci fi, thriller, horror, and it was here. Uh, in Tennessee from fourth from April fourth to the tenth, I was there most days, and uh, yeah, yeah, and it's, it was great. Oh, tell her who else is a part of it. What do you mean? What's you have other family members that are, are part of it. it. Part of Panic Fest? <laughs> Seriously, dude, you got some sisters in law that might be hanging out there. I don't know. Your sister. Yours, oh, yours. Yeah. We came, yeah, yeah. We came in. Also, uh, <laughs> <did>. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah McGuire, friend of the show. She, yeah. There were lots of people there, man. It was good times. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, don't worry. I mean, I thought I was, I was the sick one. You're gonna have to spell things out for me today. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have to go the other. Oh, one second. I gotta, I gotta get something off the shelf over there. Um, he's looking something. Yeah, he's gonna um, show us something. Um, what, what was, what was you were you what? you were there? Yeah, I was uh, there. Oh, was I there? <laughs> was was I there? Yeah, for you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is my I was there shirt. I got I couldn't find one at the world. Okay, so there's WrestleMania World. I couldn't find one there in my size, and mm -hmm. I literally bought one of the ten dollar ones off of the street, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, Monday at Monday Night Raw, I finally found one in my size. <laughs> But now that's over, let's talk about a million and a half beavers. Just hundreds, apparently. Um, so this a uh, billion beavers. This is uh, directed by Mike Cheslick. This star, this writers are Mike Cheslick and Ryan Briggs and Cole Twos. And this stars Ryan Briggs and Cole Twos is Gene Kayak. Uh, Olivia Graves is the fur furrier. West Tank is the master fur top year, the trapper. Doug Machinsky as the merchant and Louis Rico. As the Indian fur chappy, there are uh, other people in here, but they are all dressed in costumes. Uh, because hundreds of beavers is like nothing I've ever seen before. But, um, Neil, why don't you read the storyline for I can't believe out of all the sound effects, that's the one you went with. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I love, love you to death. All right, Lee. uh, where is the storyline? I'm looking. I'm waiting. Let's get in there. Um, in this 19th century supernatural winter epic, a drunken Applejack salesman must go from zero to hero and become North America's greatest fur trapper by defeating hundreds of beavers for beaver. <laughs> for beaver. Uh, so this is... Man, it's hard to explain what this movie is because I... I we can say it's silent. We can say things, but it's it's a uh, black. It's in black and white, and it's really like watching a live action cartoon. Yes. Now, I'm gonna say some stuff, and when I say this stuff, I want you to settle the fuck down and not yeah, yeah, jump yeah, yeah. in and get crazy. Don't get I too crazy yet. Don't I get I crazy. Mm -hmm. When you first go into this movie. You have no idea what the fuck you are watching. Even if we explain it to you a hundred and four times, you are not going to understand what you are watching. But saying that, I even messaged Chris when he, I started watching this movie. What the fuck did you get me into? Why am I watching this movie? Especially... When I had like a, a fever, <laughs> like I I just want to watch something normal, you know. I just want to watch like yeah. you know, like give me something like you know Roadhouse or Ghostbusters or you know something Sorry. normal, something normal. And that's not what Chris did. <laughs> Chris is like, let's give him the most thing that's gonna make him hallucinate dreams for the next ten years, um, but. All that being said, I would have preferred to seen this in the theater. This, yeah. uh, it could have been 20 minutes shorter. That's my only complaint. Uh -huh. uh, this is usually the kind of platform that runs better when it's in short distances and not a long sprint like this uh -huh. is. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I am not going to lie. I had a really good time with this movie. <laughs> like yeah. after I got going and it wasn't, it wasn't, I found its pattern or anything like that. It was just like the story finally like made sense to me finally. Like, cause <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it is, even though it's very right on what it is supposed to be. <laughs> um, you're, you get confused by like, all the stuffed animals and all the, you know, like yeah, you all sort the... of have to get to acclimate to what you're actually watching. Once you do, I really so this was uh, didn't screen in theaters, theater festivals. Um, you came through uh, through the screen land. I didn't get a chance to see it, but when I saw those at screen land, uh, and I got an email from the PR firm, I was like, they give us a screener that asked us we want to talk about. It. So I looked at it, and uh, I, this would have been fun to see in the theater full of people. I think yeah. I, yeah, I would love to see other people's reactions. Because mm -hmm. as it, much as my reaction is good and fun for me, I love seeing other people's reaction when it comes yeah. to things. this. Would be a fun movie to see in a full theater. So if it or, gets released, or in a stadium full of seventy one thousand three hundred forty three <laughs> people. What was it? So so you guys, how far was your uh, hotel or your Airbnb from? What's the wrestle mean about it? Just real quick. Uh, it was a total of like uh, eleven minutes by Uber. Oh, you guys took an Uber there. You guys didn't do that. And then they're in their public transit. It just it just didn't work out that way. It just didn't work. Okay. Out that way. <laughs> it, it, it couldn't work out any other way. So this movie is it's uh, <gasps> I guess would you say it's fine for the whole family? It's unrated because it's not submitted for the uh, full release yet. But I I didn't know until this movie that Applejack was an actual. I'll call it beverage. I actually have some in the. I actually have some here. How is it? I actually have a full bottle. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I had it <laughs> I, with me. Me and my wife found it uh, during the holiday season, and you're supposed uh -huh. to keep it warm. It's supposed to be a warm drink. Yeah. And we're like, oh, we gotta try that. And then we got it. And now every time we look at it, we're just like, ah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh. Yeah, so there's drinking in this, but that's the very beginning. And then after that, it's a bunch, of, I'd say one bunch of dead animals, but it's very cute. Uh, every animal you've seen here is dressed as an animal, like in like a mascot costume. Uh, and it just sort of ramps up until the end. Neil's right, it does run a little long uh, for this type of format. My, my, my favorite scene, I believe I have a photograph of it. Here it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> is when they're ripping out the intestines of one of these stuffed animals, but it's all fuzzy intestines. And yeah, so <laughs> yeah, <I'll tell> <laughs> that, yeah. I was like, I was just like, all right, <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> it's it's very funny. I, I laughed a lot during this movie. Um, we did not laugh a lot, but I laughed a, laughed a lot because yeah, it, it's really like watching like a, a fucking Looney Tunes. Like we it really is. Yeah. It, it is. It is like watching a. Is it PG thirteen R rated? What do they put this? There's some yeah. stuff in here. They pull on intestines. There's, there's a. I think. I what think do they, they say? The, the fuck word was. Uh, the, uh, there's no rating for this. This is not rated. No, this is not rated yet. It's unrated. All right. But anyway, it'll be it'll be PG thirteen or R ish. I don't know because yeah. there's no cuss words. There's really no blood and gore. But still, there's a lot of. I mean, there's one point a uh, chick gets, you know, pretty much butt naked and jumps on a stripper pole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you know, about. I mean, it also felt, it also felt a little bit like Super Mario. It points to you. You know, I, I thought it was fun. <laughs> there is a there is a review. There is a review I read. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, what now? What what's the name of the show? Name of what the show? Yeah, what show are we on? The movie's on second Sunday, do you? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, let's see. Continue talking about random stuff. Yeah, so um but hundreds of beavers it... Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, what you happened? Yeah, you went weird. Uh one second, you're back. You just popped real quick. I don't want to talk to you anyway. 
Uh, Chris just left me for his own feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. He, he doesn't love me anymore. I think that's a problem. Someday. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, what was that, bro? I don't know. It's just went crazy over here. So yeah, uh, it just popped. It just like on my side, it sounded like a, and then it's your voice completely changed. All right. So one, two, three. All right. So what I was saying was uh, there's a person that put it brilliantly, and I just found it, and then I lost it because you ran away from me. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see. It was. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I just had it and I, it's okay, I kept, man. It's I okay. kept moving because you you jumped up. Oh, there it is. There it goes. The film, which used the composing shot footage, was humorously referencing it seemed like it was a video game mixed with a Buster Keaton like or Bruce Campbell like antics, adding comedy and devilish stunts to plus witty audio, audio bits. Right there, that yeah, says it. I, yeah. Also, uh, like slapstick, you know, there's a bunch of that, like a bunch of slapstick. There's, there's mm -hmm. and it's 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 funny, man. Like, um, it's it's a fun movie. Uh, like you said, it is 148 minutes long, which it could have been 130 easy, you know. Yeah. Like, but uh, like, there was a lot of fun in this movie. That I mean, the guy made it for only 150 thousand. That, yeah, which, that which is 150 thousand. Yeah, yeah, and. <laughs> that was basically cost, because of the costumes. Yeah, it cost ten thousand dollars to make a costume. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man. Chris, uh, what? Give me your sp rating, man. Give me your uh, one out of five. What is this, bro? Zero out of through five. A three point seven, three point eight. It's a little long, but it's something I haven't seen before, and that that says it counts for something, you know. And Chris, I'm going to be right there with you. Um, because of the awkwardness. I think we can go a little bit higher. I think I'm going to give this a 3.8. And the reason being okay. is because it's awkward. And I love that it's a movie I've never seen before. Right. Um, so me and Neil, we're at 3.8 for hundreds of viewers. We do recommend it. It's going to be on um, VOD starting the 15th on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime and uh, Apple TV. So you guys want to watch something fucking weird and fun, watch hundreds of viewers. Um, we're at tomatoes.com. What is the audience score for hundreds of beavers? Oh man, they got they already got scores. Yeah, I thought yeah, this was absolutely. not available yet. Um, no, all no, right. it's available. Um, it, did, it, did, it did tour through the U.S. and so a lot of people saw it during the tour. All right, um, I am going to have to say it has to be an eighty-five percent, ninety-three percent. Oh, you're so close. Yeah, okay, all right. I'm on the what's the creek score for hundreds of beavers? You know, 68. 95%. Damn, sir. Critics by since, fresh in the house. <laughs> yeah, Critics consensus is sustaining a zany premise of stylistic bravura and inspired gags. Hundreds of beavers is a comedic gym that gives a damn. <laughs> um, you, a bad review and a good review. Um, so this is from uh, Luke White Thompson, the AV Club. He says, the viewers are about as sympathetic as a cash at gopher, and John's a nitwit, so the audience's only rooting interest is in seeing how crazy things get. All right, whatever. You're and this crazy. is a, uh, yeah, and this is from Robert Abley, the LA Times. He says, you know, you do well to satisfy your craving for a knockabout lunacy by checking out hundreds of viewers, as visionary as Indy and in Mini Moon and Damn site uh -huh, more fun so so it, yeah uh we like this movie it's going to be available for vod starting uh the 15th if you're watching this uh if you're watching reading the it'll be ready sunday so uh if you guys get a chance to check this out it's fucking wild you're it is pretty wild it's uh do get it check it out if you want to see something you've never seen before that's basically <laughs> the best way to say it yeah yeah so I'm glad I'm glad that you enjoyed it, even though you're you were. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, there, you know, you can see it 
together. You could see it with a friend. You could see it with, you know, people you just met, or you could see it in an arena with 71,243. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, question navigating that was it easy? Like get, getting in with all those people? Um, I mean, did you have exclusive the, access to the front? No, no, you had to go through all. You have to go, oh. just, you have to go down um, the road and stuff like that. Uh, but um, they did have our own porta potties in an area. So that was cool. So we didn't have to go mm -hmm. up for that. Yeah. And then we had a beer guy that kept on hitting us up because he knew <laughs> yeah. we were really beer people. But um, also, um, besides that, it, on the levels, when you're up on the, the, the different levels of the arena, mm -hmm. of the football stadium, that was yeah. packed as hell. Yeah. Like, all the hell. I've never seen anything that packed ever. And I've been to four, uh, three other WrestleManias. So, like, literally, that was a little much. But as soon as we were in our own areas, yeah. like getting food and, and gear or anything like that, that was hell. That was <laughs> yeah. hell. Like we'd have to wait like 30 minutes in a line to even get near to just getting a you know a hot dog. You know Ugh. what I'm saying? Like so it's like so then we decided to eat way before we got there. Yeah, Beer yeah, guys too. on the floor, you know, and stuff like that. But all right, that's man. What we did. Yeah, you got some news to that for us? I got some news. Yeah, it was, Let's it's been do a couple it. weeks. So. I know. We'll see what we got. <laughs> This is the movies that don't suck in some of the news. I'm going to read stuff to Chris, and he's going to cry like a little baby because he doesn't understand words. Right. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do All right. this. All right, let's. All right. Well, Chris, this one ain't laughing. This is the way we start it because this okay. was just announced a couple hours ago. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola's wife of 61 years, Eleanor Coppola, has passed away at the age of 87 years old. Uh, if you don't know, she was also a director, a documentary maker as well. Uh, she helped with um, the making of documentary about Apocalypse Now. Uh, she did Hearts of Darkness, which won oh, Eleanor. Hearts of Darkness is probably my, my favorite documentary. One of them. Yeah. 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 She won an Emmy for that. Uh, I mean, years and years and years. Go look up her work. Respect the lady. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, respect France, uh, Francis Ford Coppola and his family at the time. Our mm -hmm. wishes go out to all of them. She is the aunt, if you don't know, of Nicholas Coppola, who everybody doesn't know is Nicholas Cage. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, Jason Schwartzman, who yeah. uh, is, you know, she's aunt too as well. So big family in Hollywood. Uh her art will be missed. Um, and prayer, uh, you know, had good thoughts yeah. out to her friends and family. Yeah, yeah, sure. Rest, rest in peace. All right. Oh, no. Are you ready for the something that's going to blow your mind? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last movie we previewed is now the number one most watched original film in all of streaming history. That's right. The good old movie Roadhouse with Jack <laughs> Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor has huge success. So much that now even thinking of doing a whole, a whole series with good old Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, I mean, I, I like Roadhouse. I'd like to see if that continue. Honestly, a uh, different setting, but still, Jake Gyllenhaal just going out there and whooping ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean that. Mean, are you ready for this? For the first week mm -hmm. alone, 1.7 billion. What? Billion. Views of this 1. movie? 1.7 billion minutes watched of this movie. <laughs> that's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of minutes of Roadhouse. Man. <laughs> well, um, I mean, good, good, good for Roadhouse, man. Like, uh, we liked it, you know? The official title of the movie coming up for the MCU, Thunderbolts, has an asterisk next to it. And nobody knows hmm. why. And Kevin Foggy says you won't know until the movie comes out. Uh, there's a big hoopla around it. A lot of people have been freaking out over it. And uh, I don't know what to think about that. So, so it says Thunderbolts asterisk? Is that what it shows? 
Yeah, there's an asterisk on the end of Thunderbolts. Well, that's weird. I wonder what that what that means for people. Yeah, I know, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the movies that Netflix is in the works of remaking and rebooting, they are sending the originals back out to the movie theaters. So movies okay, like so Dune, Beverly Hills Cop, Sixteen Candles, uh, Footloose, Beverly Hills Cop, all those cult classes, Nightmare on Elm Street, all those movies that they're working on trying to make. Oh, and also The Natural and This is Final Tap are all going out to the movie theaters again. So they want to get people hyped up because they're remaking and redoing reboots and and sequels to all those films. I'm going to pivot real quick to Panfest. And Panfest, I got to see uh, Man on Elm Street with Heather Langenkamp, the lead of that movie. That, that's amazing. And that was really cool. Yeah, she was uh, she told much stories about on the set. Yeah. All right, now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go kill myself now. <laughs> You would have loved it. I know you. Would. I mean, I wish I could have just like been within hands reach of like the rock or something, but I guess <laughs> <laughs> seeing Nightmare on Elm Street would have been best. Um, let's continue with a little bit of the MCU news real quick. So mm-hmm. a lot of people are upset about this. I guess this happened about ten days ago, but we haven't talked about it, so let's do it. So, if you know Julia Garner, she was uh, she's the girl from Ozarks uh, plays. You know the girl that you know lives in the trailers with all her family, mm-hmm. and she's always the one What's that helps. Uh, Julia Garner. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, oh, this uh, is Julia Garner. You. As a <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, Julia Garner uh, will be playing the Silver Surfer. They are flipping it and making it a female Silver Surfer. So she's going to be uh, Shala Blah in the upcoming, which means if there's a Silver Surfer, this announces who is the villain in the Fantastic Four movie. Who? Like the only biggest fucking villain in all of goddamn MC. I was hoping you, I, I was waiting for you to, to, to announce it because that's your thing. Galactus! Galactus, <laughs> one of my favorite villains in all of comic books. They've never got him right on any form whatsoever, <laughs> except for animated, <laughs> the animated series Silver Surfer. If you ever seen that, they were made by the same people that did uh, the original X Men. It's a good one season series. Go watch it. But Galactus, seriously, I can't wait. I hope they he do was it right. He was in Eternals, right? He was, he was in Eternals, wasn't he? No, 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 no. He wasn't in Eternals. No, 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 no. Don't you ever, don't you ever say. Uh, Jafar Bardem, Bardem is the top choice right now for Galactus. Wait, it's unclear. You mean Javier, Javier, Javier Bardem, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Javier. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm literally still got a, I still got a temperature. And so you already guys know how much I fuck up names. So um, <laughs> Javier uh, Barum is, is literally the guy that the name is going around. Um, Kevin's movie, Kevin Smith is coming out with a new movie. And it's going to be called The 430 Movie. It's an upcoming of age comedy set in the summer of 1986 featuring a story of love and friendship. The film stars Austin Cesare, Nicholas Calaria, Reed uh, Northup, and Shina uh Shai, I can't read that name. Shana Ongadon, making a departure from his iconic Jane Silent Bob duo. Uh, there will be no Jane Silent Bob in this. This will be just a nice, mm-hmm. great comedy of coming to age film. In the eighties, it so it's, it's, it's looks like sixteen candles to us because it's in the eighties. So be fun. Chris, yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you, I was born ready. Do you need, you you have a choice. You can take the blue pill and go back to sleep and none of this ever happened. Or you can take the red pill and see how far the rabbit hole goes. Um, Okay, I I, I might take the red pill. (laughs) But, um, yeah. The Matrix 5 is now in Mm. works. The Mar the Martian writer Drew Goddard is now working mm-hmm. on the fifth movie, uh, with 
Lana uh, Wachowski. Yeah. Yeah. They're working on it. The story hinted at an original cast involvement. So they're probably going to move away from Neo and all that. Well, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> like, like uh, I remember I had a rant that probably went on for... 10 minutes or like eight minutes about the matrix four when we talked about it. I remember I got done. And I was like, are you done? Cause you talked for like five minutes straight. I had, I had thoughts on it and my thoughts on the fifth. Uh, I really don't care about fifth one, but you know, that's what they're making it. So whatever. <laughs> All right. I mean, what are your thoughts on the fifth matrix? One of my favorite things when all the matrix, the original matrix came out was a little yeah, animated yeah. film called the animatrix. Mm -hmm. Which had yeah, little shorts in it. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those that had the little shorts in it uh, for people at home. It has little shorts in it that of stories that happen within the Matrix. If they could get some time like that kind of feeling in a mm -hmm. movie, and not just try to do the shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up, agent shoot 'em up kind of movie. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm all down for it because the Animatrix. Reminds me of like a Black Mirror or what um, Room oh, 401. Love, Death, and Robots. Or, yeah, or Love, Death, and Robots. There we go. Great, great. Exactly. That is, those are awesome because it's a creative. It's new. Mm -hmm. It's something different. If you can just give me shoot them up, uh, Agent Smith bullshit over and over and again, I, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care. <laughs> yeah, I'm so be I, um, I wasn't a fan of uh, the first <coughs> Matrix War, whatever it was called, like Reloaded Again or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, if we do a movie podcast, we're going to have to fucking talk about it. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, right. Right. Uh, like, a lot of people were like, you see them? I'm like, um, yeah, I have to do this for the show. So, right. And um, so, all right. Do you like DC movies? I know you don't. But I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so secretly, mm -hmm. nobody knows this, but secretly, for the past couple weeks, all the DC movies have been disappearing from all the platforms. So, like, uh, that means, like, everything you got off HBO Max and stuff? It's just Max. It's not HBO. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, everything's just. I saw this heated. I say I saw this heated uh, argument between wrestlers about that on a on a, <laughs> a show the other night. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah. So they are going to be doing the Disney approach. Okay, they're going to throw things in the vault, and oh. in a couple of years, they're going to release some out for people to watch them. Do you mean like a DC like like a subscription service thing again? No. It's okay. they're they're just not going to put them out there in the public cuz they're trying to figure out some way to be different than Marvel. Mm, I see. Uh, so they're basically making it like like we're, we're resetting. They've took them off. They've took them off of Netflix, they've taken them off of Disney Plus, they they've taken them off of uh on the Max. They've been taking them off and people just now began to notice. Is the Harley Quinn series still on Max? That's why I don't know. It better be. Better be. <laughs> I haven't checked. Because if they if it's not, man, I will kill a motherfucker. I, I, will, kill I will kill them. I will kill them all um to death. And then um all right. Let's talk real quick about trailers. trailers. Me and you. Some couple of trailers came out in the last yep. week. Uh -huh. Let's talk about two of them in specifically. Okay. One, I know you've had seen it. Maxine's trailer came out. Mad scenes? Maxine? Oh, yeah. I forgot I saw that. Yeah. That's what we saw. It. I'm the sick one. <laughs> Maxine, the trailer looks like, it like, like, like it's weird because it makes it look like a crime thriller, doesn't it? Yes. I, uh, I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, because. Yeah. Because it gives us a different, because that's what worked with X and Pearl mm -hmm. is that they're different. They're completely yeah. different. And you're now you're giving us a third movie that's going to link them all together 
and it's a criminal mystery documentary kind of. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm excited, I love all right? the above. I can't wait. I can't wait. Now, let's talk about the other trailer that came out. Okay. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the second part of it, but it's the Joker sequel. Uh, Fully uh, do, uh, Fully do or something like that. Yeah. What's your thoughts idea? on that? Uh, so, um, <sighs> so it it it's um interesting in the fact that that I, I don't know if if they I don't know if they need to make a sequel, but Tom Phillips said it's a, uh, a musical, but it will make sense right. when you see it. Uh, everyone would think it's actually a musical, but but I, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be like. I'm I'm interested, but I don't know, man. I didn't really think we need a sequel for this movie, and I don't know if. Maybe they jumped the shark, but I don't know. Fully I do. Joker, fully I do. It's the sequel to Joker. The thing they said wouldn't have a sequel. And now it's almost done. You're in September, I think. Right? And my thing is this, man. Um, <laughs> it's not your Joker. Not, you're not your Joker. Not the it's one not my Joker. Know. I yeah. like the Joker movie. Not my Joker. Mm-hmm. And in that universe, it all works out. Let's just follow the story. If it's good, it's good. If it at least makes sense. Like if, as long as it's like, doesn't show a superhero who's a crippled after five weeks of being a superhero and kills every person <laughs> that he meets, you know, if it makes sense, if it makes sense. Yeah, we'll find out October right. 4th. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, I know I'm running a little long, but we okay. knew it would because you know yeah. we haven't talked we'll have- about news so i'm going to cut a couple things real quick and i'm just going to talk about all the happy good stuff uh oj's dead that's happy let's talk about okay. that he's good <laughs> it's nice. um uh yeah oj's sorry no, so, so, hey, sorry to the kids you know he has kids don't they have he has kids oh right? yeah Sorry to the kids if you ever hear this, but the bastard did kill your mama. Um, so hope he has fun yeah. and health. That exactly. All right. So this is going to basically be like a bunch of movie announcements. I figure is where we're going to go with this. Oh, okay. oh let's get the, let's get this other one out of the way. Jonathan Majors, uh, found guilty, uh, will be serving a year of community service for. His violent acts. Everybody is asking for the guy who plays uh, in the new Fallout series. If you've not seen the Fallout series, you've wasted your life. And, and since the movie, <laughs> since that came out, me and my wife have yeah, one yeah. episode left, and I've yeah, been yeah. sick as fuck for you know since I got back. <laughs> that show is amazing. Go fucking yeah. watch that tonight. If you ever like the Fallout series, watch it now. This second, <laughs> this very fuck us, turn us off, go yeah. on. So. <laughs> Chris, get back here. What are you doing? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, sorry. But anyway, oh. John Mage is found guilty. All right. Uh, cast news Jer- Jeremy White has been cast as the boss himself. Bruce Springsteen coming movie called Nebraska. So, okay, there's one, there's John White's yeah, knocking yeah, everything. Yeah. So they're going to talk about the, the making of that album, probably. Jeremy White said, like, because all biopics nowadays, they still always seem to focus on like a pivotal moment of Irish life. So I guess they'll be making a Nebraska, which, hey man, I'm all about that. I'm all about. It. And plus, it's Jeremy White. Guy's amazing. Has he's knocked everything out of the park so far. Mm-hmm. What can we say? Batman is getting the green light. They released the minute and two, uh, the minute long footage. That the animators did to um, get the green light. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, we want this. I watched it earlier today. We want this. It's awesome. Uh, you can find the footage. It, uh, I know it's on MovieWeb.com that I saw, but go for it. Batman Beyond footage. All right, here we go. New movies being made. Okay. Blair Witch Project. Blumhouse is in new reboot of the Blair Witch Project is in the works by Blumhouse and Lion Gate working Inter- together. In- interesting because I saw I saw the Blair Witch Project also paying fest. They had the director and um, Michael from it, and they didn't mm-hmm. mention that at all, which is cool. I'm sure that they yeah, want to was, see something. But, you know. This was two days ago. They just they just announced this. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, the, they said that they were they're going to be trying to get back to the success that it originally happened. All right, let's go here. What's this? Uh, oh, no. Nope. Oh, I opened an accident. Stanley Kerbuck's uh, debut film it has been restored to its original version and is now streaming. So you can go see Kerbuck's 953 war film Fear and Desire, which is considered one of the best movies of all time. The original 70-minute version of Fear and Desire was recently discovered and has been remade. Uh, oh, not remade, but um, is now streaming. It's not saying where it's streaming at. Uh, yeah, it's not saying we're streaming, but go look it up. Stanley Kerbuck, if you like him, uh, Kubek is literally one of the best directors in the history of everything, arguably. Yeah, I agree. Um, A. Adams is in a horror movie called Night Bitch, uh, it will be coming out in <laughs> December. Uh, the film could be a dark horse hit for Adams in a horror genre, offering a unique look. It's a stay-at-home mom turning into a dog at night. Nice. Go Amy Adams. Nice. Zellweger, Hugh Grant, and Thomas have all signed back on a name of it. Yes, the Bridget Jones movie I announced last month. It's called Bridget Jones, Mad About the Boy. Emma Thompson, Renee Zellweger. I'll go see it. And of course, Do you like those movies? Your mom likes those movies. Yeah, they're hey, good. Dude, uh, you gotta, uh, there's some sort of delay. You need to leave and come back. Why? Because there's like a, a five second delay. Oh my God. Hopefully this doesn't have everything up. <laughs> it's just me now, guys. Neil's uh, trying to uh, fix this. Uh, we have a delay. It's just been... Uh, Difficulty is difficulty today. Uh, but if you guys watching, thanks for watching. I know it's uh, been a bit hard. Uh, I'm not sure where Neil's at. He's going to try to come back. Uh, you're back. You made it. Your mom made it. All right. Uh, after Bridget Jones. All right. Give me a second. So mm -hmm. one. Two. One. Two. One. Two. Yeah, you want me to try? I'll, I'll try to get out of your view. See if it's the same thing. <sighs> now, Chris has left because Chris effed it all up for us. It's all Chris's fault. Chris did it, not me. It's been Chris the entire time. One. Two. There we go. We're oh, on. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, right. so after, after Bridget Jones. All right. Five Nights at Freddy's has got the green light. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is on its way out the door. Cool. Awesome. Boom. Gone. Let's not talk too much more about that. <laughs> Glenn Powell has been tapped to start an Eggard Wright's adaptation of Stephen King's remake, The Running Man. They, they said that wrong. It's not Stephen King's The Running Man. No. Who wrote The Running Man? I I don't know. Is it, is it Richard even... Bachman. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, okay. I was like, pretty, but uh, did, when they do it now, when they republish it, is it under Stephen King or is it Richard Bachman? I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't looked. But it, <laughs> Richard Bachman was Stephen King, if you guys don't know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, back in the day when they had Emerson's. Um, the Scary Movie <laughs> series is getting a complete reboot, and it's uh -huh. under development from Paramount and Merrimax. Okay, uh, I don't, I don't know if that, that, that actually needs to be like, but okay. A new installment will be will hit theaters in Halloween season of 2025. Okay, next year. Oh, we got time. All right, it, it, it's it's hard to figure out. Out of the next three, it's hard to figure out which one should be the last one I tell you. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Ooh. All right, we'll go with the one I think you'll think is less interesting. Okay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. has gotten the green light for a new film, but it's not G. It's not PG. It's not PG-13. It will be a hard R Ninja Turtles movie. 
Okay, I'm interested. I thought you were gonna say it's not PG, not, not R. Gory. Rated X. <laughs> but, um, but um, yeah, uh, Gory. I'm looking for that. I mean, it got the green light. Is it gonna be live action? It will be. It yeah, it's gonna be based off of the last Rowan. If you don't know what that is, it's uh pretty much all the Ninja Turtles die mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. it. Splinter's dead, all the Ninja Turtles did. And the last Ninja Turtle standing is Michelangelo. What? But Michelangelo is a, yeah, but Michelangelo isn't like all happy pizza cowabunga <laughs> dude, Michelangelo. He's like, everybody I know is dead now. I must hold the sacred. You no, know, it's like vengeance. it's very it's, dark. Yeah. If you, yeah, yeah, go, go read the comics if you get a chance to, guys. <coughs> All right. Um, Chris Farley, the biopic, has been greenlit. The director will be Josh Gad, the guy who does the voice of Olaf in Frozen or, you know, Hot Tub Time Machine. I, don't, I can't remember mm -hmm. everything the dude's been in. Uh, but the man playing Chris Farley is Paul Walter Hauser, also known from, um, gosh, what, what's everything he's been in? I don't know. Like, what, what's all the stuff that dude's been well, in? Like, uh, he was in, yeah, he was the one that was in the Bomb movie. He was the one that broke the legs in Itania. He was oh, that guy. the guy that was. Yeah, he's a professional um, I'm too. trying to remember every movie that. Yeah, he's in like so many different movies. Well, he's he's, he's, like, he's Richard in Richard Jewell. A... He's played Richard Jewell. Richard Jewell. That movie. He was in Black Klansman. He was in Defy Blood. He was in. He was in Cruella. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, he's a Cruella. There's another yeah. one that he was in that was famous. Yeah, like so. That is your lineup for the Chris and Chris Farley movie. I I'm down for that. I feel like they're gonna give it the love it deserves. I, I listened to uh, Adam Sandler's song about Chris Farley like yesterday, crying my desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh god you, every time yeah. every time last but not least you might have already heard of this but i put it in the news segment they did come out a couple days ago dune 3 messiah has been greenlit we are going to get the complete trilogy of the dune series all right man i really hope the third one's as good as the last one because it's gonna be hard to beat because Dune Part Two was so fucking good, Ugh, so good. I mean, maybe it just goes up. <laughs> maybe. maybe it just keeps on going yeah. up. All right, man. Is that, is that right? And that's the news, news, Chris. All right, let's. Uh... That is the movies don't suck and some of the news. I told Chris a bunch of stuff because he's blind in both eyes since that accident with the acid. So is it? <laughs> you can't mute it. By the way, um, you can't what? mute it when you do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, when you do that, when you cough it up, you spit it out. I know you had it in your mouth. No, I, I don't have anything in my mouth. See, ah, uh... okay. Um, all right. So uh, we're talking about Bob Marley, One Love. Um, this is directed by Ronaldo Marcus Green. He's directed such things as Monsters and Men, King Richard, uh, the the movie with the uh, Will Smith before he we won an Oscar that time, but earlier that evening he slapped Chris Rock, and that was some fucked up shit to see. Um, this is written by Zach Balin, Terrence Winter, Freaky Flowers. This stars uh, Kingsley Ben Adir as Bob Marley. Friend, yes, well, I am his friend, and that is why I am trying to give him a wake up call. Also, Lashana Lynch as his wife. Read him, Marlon. Look, this all seems like heaven. Uh, James Norton plays Chris Blackwell. If I ask for leave, I will take care of the children. What? Also, Anthony Wel Welch plays Don Taylor. I got mixer. This also stars Tosa and Cole as Tyrone Downey, Uni Myers as Cindy Breakspear, uh, Michael Gandolfini, the son of the late James Gandolfini, plays Howard Bloom, uh, Alex Hagen plays Pierre Tosh, and there's all types of people that you recognize in this. Neil, what is he? Uh, storyline for a bit of Bob Marley One Love. The story of how reggae icon 
Bob Marley overcame adversity and the journey behind the revolutionary music. So before reading this, Neil, what do you think of Bob Marley's music? Are you a fan of Bob Marley? I mean, that one time when he did my, uh, you know, my bar mitzvah, he was <laughs> not, awesome. Not that, but I think you're thinking of different Bob Marley. What do you think of? <laughs> so, uh, in a, I don't think you're Jewish either. Are you? You're not Jewish. Uh, Neil, yeah. no, 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 I'm, I'm not any of that. That's why all that was funny, Chris. <laughs> it's called a joke. <laughs> uh, what I think of Bob, who, if you don't like Bob Marley, at least a couple of his songs, at least mm -hmm. something. If you don't every now and then go, I shot the yeah, sheriff. Yeah. Or if you don't go, jamming, jamming in the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamming for what love, what yeah. life. Like if you don't, if you don't have that, that funk, that jazz. In your hips, I feel sorry for whoever you're in. The yeah, Bob Marley is a like literally dude's a visionary. It does dude's a visionary, and um, this movie uh, only covers from the time to his first attempt at a Pete's concert to his most his last time at Pete's concert in Jamaica. It covers that five or six years in between that. Yeah. Um it's not a it's not a conference of a biopic as saying from like you know child to adulthood until his, his death in 1981. Uh, it's just a uh, it just covers that. Um, discovers that probably the most pivotal time of his career, and I liked it, man. <laughs> I, I did like this movie. I liked it, and I didn't. Like okay, it. well, can we talk about what you liked first? Sure, acting was great. Uh, person, places, yeah. things yeah. were awesome. Um, that was good. Um, I think the movie stopped too yeah, early. You could have gone another hour, maybe. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't mean time okay, frame okay. wise. As the story itself mm -hmm. stopped a little too early. Okay. I think it needed to set up one of the biggest events that Bob Marley was a, pay, a big part of, which is creating peace between you know the different mm -hmm. sides of the Jamaican warfare. I think they should have set that mm -hmm. up more because that was a very pivotal time and not just Bob Marley's history, but the history of the world because of them, literally a civil war stops. I mean, that's a pivotal point of history, man. That's like doing a, you know, and like an Abe Lincoln movie <laughs> and just completely just throw out that whole civil war thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, uh, I do think that um, it, a lot of people were complaining that it didn't show enough of this creative process, and I thought we got enough of that. I really liked the scene with with I can't with Exodus. That was a a cool scene. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, especially with the uh, with uh, what they call him Permhead. I think was his <laughs> yeah. nickname that they gave yeah. him. Uh, I kind of gave a little bit of like, oh, hey, this is how we this do it. How, uh, and he's like, well, this is how I do it. And um, I thought it was really good. Um, also, the fact that I uh, researched uh, Rastafari and stuff like that. And knowing that all this time, all this time, it wasn't the, it was y'all. Yeah. And I just thought, y'all. <laughs> Like job people need to make it right. <laughs> like I thought, I thought it was the people got to make it right, but that's just a Jamaican yeah. accent. It's just Jaws, you know? the name of, uh, and, of God. Uh, uh, Jaws, the, the name of their yeah. God or you know Savior or whatever. Uh, the restaurant and, also believe High Selassie, who was uh, Emperor of uh, Ethiopia, was the second coming. I also believe that. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, and he was yeah he was considered the second coming or whatever in nineteen twenties or something like that. But um. So that was cool facts to learn. Um, uh, but I thought they could just spit. Oh, I don't think it was creative. I think really, I don't know. The creative part, I thought they gave us enough of that. The only thing, my biggest problem is the guy who played Bob Marley was not dirty. Enough. <laughs> not dirty enough. Look at him. All right, let's do, do, do side by side. <laughs> that guy. All right. 
Nothing against his acting. His acting was well, great. Too nice. Is that what you're saying? His whole appearance was too he's nice. Looking, he's looking. He, he, he looks like he looks like that rich guy that put on some dreadlocks <laughs> and is like, I'm gonna be Bob Barley for Halloween, bro. I mean, yeah. And everybody's like, look, 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 look how uniform all the dreads are. Like when you see people with dreadlocks, they got big ones, they got fat ones, they got ones that are wiggling. Look at you know, they're not as but yeah, look how Bob's is. Look how the actual yeah, Bob's yeah. is. You know, like and, and that's my complaint is the fact that he looked like a guy, a rich guy that goes to a Halloween costume contest at like, you know, at his dad's law firm dressed like Bob for Marley and not he didn't make me feel like he was Bob Marley. You want better. You want uh different dreads. I get you. <laughs> but not not different dreads. It was him in particular, period. Okay. Like all right. If you do a if you do a movie about Rob Zombie, let's throw <laughs> Rob Zombie. Okay. All right. And you clean him up so he doesn't have to scuffle on the mm. side or his beard isn't all tangly. And you clean him up and you make him look really nice and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden, and you have someone like, I don't know. Let's get a pretty boy out of the thing. Um, Timothy Chalamet. Okay. <laughs> right. Timothy Chalamet <laughs> with a with dreadlocks on his head and a little beard and stuff. He's not going to make me feel like the essence of Rob Zombie. Yeah, Kingsley, and Kingsley I know, is very good and looking. I know this. He's very good looking. The lead character. Yeah, and, and and that's the thing. He was just way too good looking. <laughs> And that, that's the thing I have think I, I think this is the problem I've had with all the music bios. I think this is all coming full circle to me now. Cause Austin Butler made sense because Austin the, you know Elvis was known to be a sex item, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Austin was very sexy. But yeah, Terry and Edgerton playing Elton John. Elton John was balding, a little chubby until he got a little older and you know got the cocaine habit. <laughs> And stuff like that, but he's but way better looking than he, they John. weren't really that good looking. <laughs> yeah, Romilly Malik playing playing uh, Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury was a good looking guy in yeah. a way. <laughs> Robbie but Malik's looking. <laughs> Rami Malik's a different yeah. level of yeah, good yeah. looking. So I think. I think we need to we need to chill our fucking tits <laughs> on some of this, guys. All right, even 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 if we go a uh, recent movie that has nothing yeah. to do with music, but Iron Claw, where you have Zac Efron oh. playing Kevin Kevin Von Erich. Kevin Von Erich was one of the better looking of the freaking Von Erich but, brothers, but he is he's not even. Five levels near what a Zac <laughs> Efron is, you know. And I'm not trying to be yeah, a yeah. dick. I know these are. I know all these actors are good looking people, and they're they're doing the, they're just doing them. And the acting is great, and that's what makes that that's what makes it and stuff like that. But sometimes it just yeah, it makes it so that these people, these legends, are unreachable. So, so you're saying that. When they're very you have these actors that they're the part of their part of the reason why they're popular is because they're pretty attractive. Like like I mean that's that's what would be an actor. That's kind of what you need. Uh, right, and I understand they want to take roles of these legends, yeah. but most of these legends were not good looking people. They were just really fucking talented. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call Bob Marley <laughs> ugly. Uh, he, there's a point. I'm not saying he's ugly. I'm not. You're I'm saying not. Like he's the, the dude is very attractive. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm also saying Bob Marley didn't shower off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, with dreads, you can't. You know what I mean? I mean, they even made it a point about his infected toe. Man, that was so gross. In the oh thing. God, that was so disgusting. Yeah, and he did not shower a lot. I mean, and it's not him as a person it's just that's the culture mm -hmm. he's yeah. part of and stuff and i'm not saying that's dirty wrong or anything like that i'm not yeah. pointing one thing out of the other i'm just saying it looks like you know it looked like good old kinsley was getting skin treatments in between each take <laughs> <laughs> but anyway 
but besides that, all right, let's let's get to the good okay. part of this movie. <coughs> the acting yeah. was great. Um, the acting was great. The storyline was pretty cool. I really, I just wish they would have gone, man, thirty minutes longer in the movie, or made that ending part of the I, movie. I definitely was in, a I was definitely more... engaged the whole time during this movie. Yeah, there yeah. was no time I was like, I, did, I didn't look at my phone at any point. I don't think. Um, so, uh, which is, hey, that's that that's something um, to do to bring up now. But this, um, this movie, it was good. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I do know that people, if we're gonna be super film critics about it, the it's it's not as cohesive as it could be. It's also also does nothing really new with the, I guess, the biopic. Not that I need something new with something like this, um, because I enjoyed it and I like Bob Marley so. I was stoked to see his story told, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, and it's still great music. Obviously, his music is also all throughout. So you're gonna get your head bobbing quite a bit during this whole thing. But yeah, man. Uh, you just gotta stand up, stand yep. up, straight up for yeah. your rights. Anyway, but uh, you know, it 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 did bring it through. I, I thought there'd be more weed smoking in it. <laughs> they mentioned it once or twice. They're smoking weed the I, whole movie. What yeah, are you talking know, about? Okay, more? okay, but it's PG thirteen. So how much weed could they really show? You know what I mean? They're just there's so many. They didn't just didn't call it weed. They're just sitting there, you know, passing it, smoking <laughs> yeah. it everywhere, and they just didn't call it weed. Or a person would just be smoking a joint by themselves and not you know, passing was, it, 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 it. Near so the beginning, like the very first scene, you see Bob Marley in a car smoking a a joint while he's driving with his kids. I'm like, is that okay? Yeah. Oh, it's perfectly yeah. fine. But uh, yeah, man, that's it's not what you're supposed to I, do. I didn't know. I, what uh, I did like the um, I did like the. I mean, I like I like most this movie, you know. But uh, you, you, I think it ended like at a point. You're like, that's how it ends. You're gonna show me like, like pictures and shit. Like, like I don't know. Uh, but Barbara only one love. I like how they ended it, and that I think they should have gave us. A little bit more, yeah. About it, like all the stuff at the end. I really want to see that stuff mm. because that is the stuff that you know is the legend of Bob Marley. I love they show us how he comes from point A to point B, but man, I really wanted to see point B to point C because his last couple of years of his life he did some 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 very very important work yep. in the world. Yeah, it's uh it's it's what it was the movie came out. Um and yeah, Bob Marley was involved in making this, so uh so that was that was how they got the rights to the music. Um you know, what's your score on Bob Marley One Love? Uh I think it's a good movie. It's a, I'll give it 3.5. Uh, I'm not going to give it higher than that. And the reason being is, again, the parts I wanted to see about the Bob Marley story is the things of history that he did a major part of. They show a glimpse of that, and they're trying to show more of the creative part of him. It's not the way I would want to go in a Bob Marley movie because yeah. I want to show the work that he did. It, it It's just like... Hey man, let's do a George Washington movie, but don't have anything involved with the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah, he had a great life all the way up that and even after that. But let's not show any of that. It's like some of those key points, I feel like, especially when you're doing bio movies, you have to put those yeah. in. And it's, uh, you know, like, if you do a Hulk Hogan bio movie, you're not going to not show the first time you won a title, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. there's a whole lot of things that Bob Marley did that they didn't mention. Like, for example, like, they did mention, mention once that his trip to Africa, but that's the, it was a sentence. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, wasn't anything. Yeah, it was just, it was an afterthought. And those things meant a yeah. lot in not just his world, but like, I mean, there's books written about the stuff yeah. he did, and just like, and things he did in a, like a week. So you're you three point five. I'm three point six on this one. I'm gonna run. Maybe run to me. I was like, how was the audience score for Bob Marley One Love? I am gonna definitely have to say 
man, I'm going to say seventy-two percent. Ninety-two percent. Wow! Uh, here's the audience says too. The audience says Bob Marley "One Love" is a moving glimpse into the brief period of the singer's life, especially for viewers who don't already know a lot about him. All right, what's the critic score for Bob Marley "One Love"? Eighty-four percent. Forty-three percent. Wow! Yeah. They went way down. Yeah. Critic consensus is Kingsley Benadir does an admirable job in the central role, but Bob Marley "One Love" is ultimately a standard biopic. Doesn't do justice to his brilliant subject, which is, I think, what you're, you're, you're I, that's, that's, I think that's what my, my, and I hate that I'm agreeing with freaking critics yeah. like that, but like, yeah, that's my thing too. Like, as much, and I don't care about the creative process of him making music. Uh, that's awesome. Everybody has their own different creative process, and that's great. Show me a little bit of that, but I want to see that cool stuff that he did that changed the fucking world. Okay, so here is a, a good review and a bad review. The good review is Dwight Brown uh, of Dwight Brown Inc. says, It's a worthy addition to features, doc series, and books that we can see the facets of the reggae superstar's existence. This may not be the ultimate Marley narrative, but this project respectfully keeps his memory and mission alive. Um, and this next one is actually from uh, Jake Wilson of the age, and I think that you would agree with this. Is seeing this unlikely to be the last attempt to dramatize Marley's life story? Next time, it wouldn't hurt if a Jamaican filmmaker had to go, which would actually be interesting. They'd actually be interested in showing that part that it changed Jamaica, you know, like uh, when it came to Bob Marley, um, because you were saying that he did a whole lot of cool, like, earth-shaking stuff. They don't explore well enough into the movie. Right. So, and so, uh, yeah, this is Bob Marley One Love. It's on Paramount Plus, if you guys want to go watch it. I think it's also on VOD, if you don't want to subscribe for that um but it's okay it's it's not it's not the shittiest i was engaged all the time and i thought king lee ben Zadir did a good job uh but neil also has a problem with uh all the biopics where they have extremely good looking playing just regular looking folk so um, but um um like here here's a good review of it here too uh -huh. i just found this one right mm -hmm. yeah uh damn it i love professional wrestling this is what I think about <laughs> WrestleMania 40. Now that that doesn't mean 39 and 38 wasn't getting back to gold standard because they were great matches such as Seth versus Cody. But man, this was the first one without the thumbprint of Vince McMahon and boy as hell. Damn it. I love professional revenue. Thank you. And thank you for making this event happen. Is, I mean, is like that, seriously. Is, is, is that something you're going to mention on your, on your other podcast? I yeah. haven't started that because what I was going to do is I was going to start that when I was there. We were just sick of shit. <laughs> that, you know, I was getting sick there. I mean, I've been uh, sick for like a week and a half, bro. Yeah. I mean, like, and I just didn't have the energy to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wanted to do it, but, you know, you're going, what, I, I'd be, I would be awake by noon would have to get food, water, shower, four people in a building, get all ready, then have to get down there by by like two, three o'clock, you're going to the first event. Then after that, you got to go to the next event. Then you got to go to WrestleMania. As soon as you're done with WrestleMania, your adrenaline's going 105 miles an hour. Got to wait like at least an hour or two until Ubers go down in price and then so you get a couple drinks and you by the time you get back to the apartment it's three four o'clock in the morning then you want to watch wrestlemania that you just went to or the <laughs> wrestling event you just went to you're going to watch an hour or two of that then it's going to be like five o'clock six o'clock in the morning you got to go to bed get back up and go again like literally uh there is a good video of cm punk uh on sunday doing an event he goes and he has like bags under his eyes and he's like has anyone else only had four hours sleep in the last three days? Yeah. And and he goes, now you know why I've had bags under my eyes for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there is this song by Operation Ivy called Healthy Body, Sick Mind. And the the thing is, the song talks about how this guy's running himself ragged and it, but he's, he's taking vitamins, but he's running and he's working eight hours and it's, it's just a matter of time. Uh, sick Body, Sick Mind, which means, you know, like, like you were yourself too ragged, you're gonna get sick. And is yeah. that's what happened? 
I I don't know, man, because I don't know, because I'm the only one that got sick in my group. <laughs> yeah. And and so it's like it's just funny. It's like, how how am I the sick guy? I was the one that was trying to get as much sleep as possible. I was trying to eat salads and not just Philly steaks and <laughs> pizza. You know, I'm the one that was trying to stay healthy, but yet here mm. I am. All right, man. Well, uh yeah. you, <laughs> you guys find us on who's on suck network, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Who's on the podcast? We're in X and just podcast. You guys want to see some pictures from Panic Fest last week? Go ahead and check out that feed because I was actually using it. Um, go to Instagram, Instagram at NTS Podcast. One, uh, probably Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash who's on suck. You'll find, uh, you can just kneel, uh, $3 to get himself a salad or maybe, maybe, maybe it's something else. I don't know. Um, go to bonfire.com slash who's on suck and something you, you'll find, uh, merch for us there. Uh, our shirts, like three or four shirts of us, and a bunch of stuff Neil has made. And we find podcasts when movies don't suck, and some that do. Neil, if you got a small business, what would we do for you? You got a small business, give us your information. You can email it, message to it, you can tattoo it on Chris's forehead, and we'll be more than happy to celebrate mm-hmm. you right here on Movies That Don't Suck and Some That Do free of charge, just because we want to support you, just like we did today for our fringe at Cr- Crash Bang Boo. All right, uh, Neil, you ready to get out of here? Let's get out of here. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. Remember, guys, no matter how good of a day you have, remember, if you want her love, you must slay a hundred beavers. Have a good day. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. And this is awkward. This is right. Thank you, Thank you very much for that. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, can you? Uh, we, I didn't see it at all. It, just, it was a blank on our screen. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's just a blank, blank space. So... Yeah, really? None that. of those? No, no, should see I? Any of uh, I can see it now. I can see it now. Uh, if you want to reshow it? Natural essential oil. You want to yeah, yeah, it? Give me a second. Let's see. Where's my Some... channel? Where's my ear channel? There we go. Boom. It didn't show anything? That's weird. No. I wonder if it's the way yeah, I played it. I see it now, but it wasn't showing when you're seeing it. It's showing it. So, right here. Okay. <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Yeah. So what happened was The Rock asked him if he could hold his belt, and Cody Rhodes is like, yeah, can I hold your belt? The belt The Rock had was a belt given to him by Muhammad Ali's widow Mm. at the Hall of Fame. The belt Cody has is the actual championship, right? (laughs) And they switched it. And when they're doing it, everybody's just like, uh, and then that's when the chant started. This is awkward. (laughs) And I thought it was like one of the funniest moments of the entire weekend. Because I was just like, this is the most awkward thing I've ever felt in my life. Can you do full? Oh, you can do that. Oh, look yeah, at this. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm just trying to learn everything we can do here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's see if we go like this. No, no, no. It just shows me I can replace stuff. Oh. See, there's like, look at this. All right. Are you are you in a rush to get anywhere? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Let me show you all these different things. So one. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that was the countdown. 
this is the presentation. So, like, I guess I could probably put a back showing of that behind it. Yeah. So, if we ever have video or anything like that, if we want to do a presentation, we can do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this one is, does. Ah, uh, this is media yeah. source. So, we can just add stuff to the screens and stuff. Yeah. Like, this is all the new things. Like, literally, we're on the side of the screen where it used to be where I, I could bring you should in. We, should we still be live, by the way? Oh, shoot. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.